This week's episode is brought to you in part by Adobe Systems, the people who bring you Photoshop, Illustrator, and an entire line of software for web design and video. CDW, for hardware, software, gadgets, and more, CDW has the right technology right now. DLO, makers of the Home Doc Deluxe. Watch your favorite podcast on your TV with the Home Doc Deluxe from DLO. Azo, makers of high-end monitors for creative and moving image professionals. And iStock Photo, the world's preeminent collection of member-generated royalty-free images and digital art. Photoshop guys and welcome to another episode brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals the fun fine people who bring you Photoshop user magazine well my name is Scott Kelby and joining me as always here on the set a foreign man from a foreign land Mr. Dave Cross hey everyone good to see you and uh, Matt of course couldn't be here because it's not big enough gar <laughs> No, actually, Matt is out uh, this week doing some Adobe, Adobe, Adobe gigs on both coast out in LA and out in New York. So uh, he'll be back in the studio next week if we have a studio next week. Well, actually, or we a think, bigger car, or a other. bigger car. It's either going to be a bigger car or a studio. We're actually cruising around today in Corey's Mini Cooper, and uh, well, there's just plenty of room in here. Hey, but we've got all kinds of exciting things. We got a really cool show for you. We've got lots of different things and some special guests may be dropping by and. All kinds of stuff like that. And to, uh, to kick things off, we have a tutorial from across the border. Uh -huh. Dave, you got a tutorial for us, don't you? I do. And actually, my uh, tutorial is based on a question we've been receiving, and that is, okay, so I've got CS3, but I've got all these things from CS2 that I want to get from one to the other. So what's the easiest way to get all my brushes and gradients and all that kind of stuff moved from CS2 into CS3? And that's what I'd like to show you now. Now, so just give me one second. Okay. All right, here we go. So here are things we can move from Photoshop CS2 to CS3. It includes things like swatches, actions, if we have any custom brushes. For example, here's a brush that I created, a little copyright brush. I don't want to do that over again. Uh, anything like tool presets. I like to use tool presets. So for example, I have one a few here that I've set up. So basically anything like this. Now actions we'll talk about separately because they are separate. But all these other things, swatches, gradients, brushes, patterns, anything like that, we find right here in the preset manager. And basically this shows us what's in there. So it shows me here's my custom brushes. So all I have to do is find them and it's these ones here. All this set are my custom brushes. I just have to choose save set. Now, initially what's going to happen is it's going to assume you want to save this in the Photoshop Brushes folder. And generally, once you're in CS3, that's not a bad idea. But for now, what we want to do is find a different place. Now, what I've done is I've gone ahead and made a folder called My Stuff. I'm going to put that in there so I know where to find it later on. So we'll just save that. And basically, just repeat that. You go into the swatches and find here's the for custom swatches that I it created and I choose save set once again it's gonna default to wanting to put it in that same place so I need to go and find my whoops my stuff there it is and you know each time I'm using the clever my something my brushes my swatches and so on and let's just do one other here's the tools that we are let's do custom shapes because here's I have important one I want to make sure I don't forget that. Now of course you could have quite a few more than I do and you'll notice again each time it's helping by wanting to put it in that specific place. So then we go save again. Guess what? My custom shapes, yes, save it and then we're done. Now at this point we're going to switch to Photoshop CS3 to bring these things in. So I've switched to Photoshop CS3. Now you have a couple of options. One of them is simply go to the Preset Manager and just go to the thing, whatever you want, Brushes, and click Load. Again, it's going to default to somewhere else, but we need to go and find My Stuff, My Brushes, click Load, and then those brushes are loaded in there. So you can do that with each one 
of all those presets that you saved. So we'd also, what else did we do? We did uh, shapes, right? So we'll choose load, go back, find my stuff, custom shapes, load, and then they're in there too. Now the other option is to make it so that you can more easily guess them. For example, let me just go ahead and make a new document. And if I were to use my brushes, here's my brushes palette and it includes the ones that I'd loaded. But if any time I had reset my brushes, then the problem I'd have is they're not there anymore. So I want to be able to get them in this menu right here. And you see how you see I have my brushes? This is how you do that. You actually go and find the Photoshop application folder, go to presets, and you'll find things like brushes. So then you would find the folder that you created. Here's one I created that has my stuff. And I would just, for example, say take my custom shapes, drag them into the custom shapes folder. That way, and I have to restart Photoshop. When you restart Photoshop CS3, from now on, the shapes, the brushes, the swatches, anything like that that you've created will be available right from a pop-up menu. All right, I've gone back to Photoshop CS2 because I did want to mention about actions. Actions are a little different but very simple. All you do is you have a set of actions. You use the pop-up menu, choose Save Actions, and the easiest thing to do is to go and find Photoshop CS3 presets, actions, and just save them right in there. And then the next time you launch Photoshop CS3, they'll be right there in the CS3 pop-up menu. Just remember, you've got to test all your actions because a few things have changed between CS2 and CS3. So make sure you check your actions in CS3 to make sure they work. Sweet. There you go. And that's a very simple way to move your presets back and forth between CS2 and CS3. Well, not really back and forth, just one way. Alrighty. Hey, it's funny that you mentioned CS2 to CS3 because one of the things that we have a lot of questions about is, and it's this exact question, which Photoshop is right for me? Because of course you've got Photoshop Elements, you've got Photoshop CS3, you've got Photoshop CS3 Extended. Well, we're not the only ones that get asked that question. Of course, Adobe gets asked that all the time. So what you can do is you can go to adobe.com and we're going to give you the link right here. Is, do we point up this way or we point up that way? It's usually up. This way. Okay, point up there. And if you're watching this podcast, uh, either in iTunes or, well, not on your iPod, right? No, you have to be on an internet connection. You can click that little link up there and go right to Adobe's website where there actually is a page. It's the Photoshop family page that helps you figure out which Photoshop is right for you so you make sure that you are using the Photoshop you should be using. They actually have a, a movie there and more information to help you make sure that you make the right choice. Now, you guys said last week in last week's show, which by the way, they were in a pool last week. I don't know if you saw that. That was highly unprofessional know, that you guys did that. That is, there's no way to do a professional show. This is anyway, much better. This is much better. <laughs> This is really taking things up a notch. <laughs> um, you can also go to CDW. I guess CDW. Well, well, you know the story. They have a person that's dedicated. Yeah, it's to a specialist, you. so that if you have, if you already own certain Adobe products and you're trying to figure out what options are available to you for upgrades, they have people there to help you with that. So. All right. Now we're going to be doing a lot more on the show to help you decide which one is right. So, uh, but not on this episode. That's coming up next. But in the meantime, we've got lots of cool tutorials. In fact, I brought one myself this week. I brought you a tutorial. That's actually, part of it is from my brand new book, the Photoshop CS3 book for digital photographers that is coming out any day. And by any day, I mean any day. <laughs> so uh, it's, it uses Camera Raw 4.1, so the latest version of Camera Raw. And by the way, if you have not down, if you have CS3, you haven't downloaded it, go to adobe.com and download the free update to Camera Raw version 4.1 because it's got all kinds of cool new features, amazing new features that 4.0 didn't have. So, Go download that first. Number two is we're going to do a 4.1 trick and we're going to add smart objects to the mix to take it a step further. So cool. check it out. Look for a book I've been working on and it's just a quick product shot. But I want to make it look like I didn't do it so quickly. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and start just by kind of uh, exposing, I guess, for the shadows. So we'll kind of make it a little darker and we'll just kind of fill this in a little bit because we're going to be able to kind of tweak this the way we want. But okay, so you can see it's a little bit dark. Now, I'm not going to hit open image down here. I'm actually going to hold the shift key and you'll see shift changes it from just open image to open object. So now it's going to open this photograph as a smart object. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll choose open object and uh, 
our image is going to show up here. Now oh, there it is. All right, let's kind of get to a different mode here. There we go. So it's going to open up there. And look in the, if you look in the layers palette, you can see that it is smart object. Looking at the little icon here, let me zoom in so you can see. See the little icon right there? The little page icon shows you that it is a smart object. So here's what we're going to do. For the highlights, we're going to reprocess. So we're doing a double processing trick. If I were to just duplicate the layer, right, and reopen that file and edit it, it's going to be linked to the original file. So we're not going to do that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to control click if you're on a Mac or you'd right click if you're on a PC. You're going to choose new smart object via copy. And what it does is it kind of breaks the link between the two of them. So it is basically a copy of the same file, but it breaks that link. So I can now adjust the top layer completely separately from the bottom layer. So we're just going to double click right on the thumbnail here. It's going to bring back up the camera raw dialog box, the 4.1 dialog, and I'm going to make it real nice and bright. So we're really going to bring out the highlights a bit here. I'm not going to go crazy, but we'll bring them out a little bit and we'll bring out, and we'll add a lot of contrast so those highlights really kind of just pop a rooney. Okay, so there we go, and then we'll just go ahead and add some clarity to really make it snappy in those midtones. Okay, so we've done that. Now we click OK, and in just a moment, it's going to update the other file. All right, so now we're going to see, well, wait just for a second until it updates. Here, this is a, this is a high, yeah, it's like a 12 megapixel file, so it's going to move a little slow. All right, so now you have the one that's kind of exposed for the shadows, and it's not real pretty. Then you've got the highlights over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on PC, and I'm going to hide this other version behind that black mask. So the brighter version is still there. It's just hidden behind this black mask. We're going to grab the Paintbrush tool. We're going to set our foreground color to white. I'm going to paint over the areas that have highlights. So let's go ahead and kind of do that. So maybe from here to here, there's some highlights there, right? And there's some highlights up here. So I'm going to the parts of the photo that are already have natural highlights. And I'm just going to really pump them up a little bit. So maybe a little back there. That wasn't very nicely done. Let's shrink this down a little bit. And there's you can see there's some highlights right in there, right? And we'll put a little over on the name. So if we were trying to pump that up a little bit, maybe right up front here. And basically, you're just going to kind of go around to any areas that seem like they're bright or you would like them to be bright. And you're just going to kind of put a little gling like that. I'm just clicking. I'm not actually painting on these areas. I'm actually just clicking. So uh, I'm going to do it right in here on the highlight on the little shutter release over there. And uh, I think that's pretty much kind of what we're going to do. All right. So can you, and you can see just by doing that, watch, I'm going to turn it off and turn it on, how it brought out, you know, I mean, it's a lot better looking image now than it was before, I think. And um, the other thing is, though, the uh, you, you can vary this the opacity if you think it's a little too hot, so it was probably a little bit bright. But what you can do also is to paint in a solid white background. So if I wanted to, I could go in here now, because that really, the background that we shot it on was not well lit. You usually want to add a couple of stops, usually about two stops to make that high key background nice solid white but we didn't do that because we just didn't do that and now you can kind of paint in your uh, and you can decide which shadows stay which shadows go kind of so you have a lot of latitude there but now the backgrounds pretty solid white missed a couple areas over here you can see but we're not done we're almost done though you know when you're working in the car you don't really want to spend a whole lot of time doing this stuff so let's kind of there we go. Just kind of get a little bit in there. And I'm, I'm not doing this as precisely as I normally would. But I didn't even have to tell you that, did I? Okay. So there we go. So we've kind of got that going on. Now, I still, I still have my, my layers. If I wanted to go back and make this actually a little richer, I can go back to this first layer, double click on it. And let's really pump up the contrast on this layer, make those darks really nice and crisp because they were a little lame. Let's add a little clarity in there and uh, make that this the blacks a little bit richer. Let's see how that affects the photo. So watch, it's going to re-prepare that. So it's still totally editable. And let's let it update. It's still waiting. There we go. All right. And that's probably a little bit hot on the the the, the darks, but shadows. But there we go. Anyway, so we're starting to get there. Now we. The, my problem now is is this thing. It looks kind of greenish. So here's what I would do. I'm going to press a keyboard shortcut. It's a long one. Shift Option Command E on PC. Shift Alt Control E. That creates like a flattened version of the whole image on its own layer. Right? So now what I can do is just remove all the color. So we can go image adjustments and just remove all the color from this top copy. Okay, so it looks like a black and white photo now. So then I'm going to option click on PC to Alt click and hide that kind of behind there. So now the black and white version 
is hidden behind there. And all I'm going to do then is just paint in black and white over this part of the lens here that looked like it was kind of greenish and fix that. So I'm just revealing the black and white photograph just in this one spot so it gets rid of that green tint that you're seeing reflecting from the face of the lens. Like that. And now you could go on and do everything else that you wanted to do to the photo. But now we've come a long way from our original photo by whitening the background, fixing the lens problem, and doing a whole lot of things to just give the, the whole image a nice little uh, nice little goose of uh, you know light where we want it. Uh, so this is actually based on a technique that is in my brand new book, the Photoshop CS3 book for digital photographers, and it's it's not the same technique you just saw. I didn't do this camera job, but you get the idea. All right, so there you have a little smart object, a little camera like rock kind of thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we've got a tutorial from Corey. We've got a special guest. We've got the news. We've got a whole bunch of just really cool stuff from our studio on wheels. Don't forget, we're just a couple of weeks away from the brand new branding, the new studio. I know I've been saying that for four weeks, but I really <laughs> feel like we're just two weeks away. Stick around. We'll be right back. Don't go away. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, Bob, uh, we're going to need some stuff, uh, lots of stuff, actually. I'm going to need six notebooks, three printers, an office phone system, oh, a wireless network, and software, of course. Need a better way to work? Try the new Adobe Acrobat 8 Professional. Create, combine, and control Adobe PDF documents and collaborate with virtually anyone, anywhere. For the latest in Adobe software, we're there. CDW. Hey, we are back. Uh, Scott Kelby with uh, Mr. Dave Cross here. And, uh, hey, hey, guys. Look, there's RC. Oh, hey, it's hey, RC. Cool. What's he doing? A couple of days ago, I wound up getting an email from a person who was asking about how to be able to take a copyright symbol. And instead of taking the symbol and putting it dead on the center of the stage, what I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to move it to a specific percentage off to the lower right. So they had said something along the lines of, how do I take this copyright symbol, instead of making it this really, really big symbol, make it, let's say, 20% big, and then move it to 5% in off the right, 5% in off the bottom. So I said, all right, well, I think we can actually do that, and we probably don't even need any kind of scripting to do it. So let me show you how. Now notice we have an image here, and the image has a copyright symbol dead on the center of it. And this is based on a Mac Oskowski tutorial on how to be able to make an, a taken copyright image and actually put it on the center. Now, what someone wound up asking on one of the forums was, is there a way for us to be able to take this copyright symbol and make it, let's say, 20% of its size? And can we take this copyright symbol and can we put it on the lower right hand portion of an image so let's say that so it's five percent off the right and five percent off of the bottom and they wanted to be able to do this with some sort of script and i said you know it's probably a good idea but let's try to see if we can actually do this without having to use any kind of scripting and do this as an action now what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete this layer and I'm going to bring up my actions panel so that you can take a look at what it is that I want to do. Now let's go ahead and create a new action and the action is going to be called copyright 2. I'm going to click on record and I'll move that out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and click on file and I'm going to click on place and right on the desktop I have a watermark and in Matt's tutorial, what he wound up doing is he wound up taking this watermark and making it absolutely huge. However, notice that if I wind up placing inside of here, because of the fact that it's much bigger than the document that I wind up having, it places to fill the entire document. But notice up here, if you take a look here, it's placing at 21% by 21%. That's very important in a couple of seconds. This is 21% of what the original copyright symbol is in the old document, not in this new document. It is taking up 100% of this space. Keep that in mind. I'm going to hit the Enter key. 
Now, in here, what happens is, let's say that I do a Command-T or Control-T to free transform. I want this to be 30% of what its size is right now. I don't have the option to do that because every time I transform, it's always going to bring me to 21%. It's all because of the place. It's going to always bring me to the 21% of the original 100% document. So we need to change that. The easiest way for us to be able to change that is by converting this into a smart object. Now I'm going to go to layer, smart object, convert to smart object. That's going to be turned into a smart object. And now watch if I do a command T or control T. Now, the percentages that are at 100%. What I can do here is I can say, all right, well, now I want this to be 30%. Now, this object is 30% of what it originally was, 30% of that entire size. But it doesn't solve how to be able to move this object to the lower right hand so that it's 5% off the right and 5% off the bottom. Easily solved. I'm going to do a select all that's going to give me some selections around the entire image and then I'm going to go to select and I'm going to go to transform selection when I transform that selection again the width and the height at the top are at 100 percent I'm going to make these 95 percent so now I have a selection that's 95 percent of the entire document once I've done that I want to make sure that I still have the watermark layer selected. I'm going to go to Layer, Align Layers to Selection, Bottom Edges, Layer, Align Layers to Selection, Right Edges. Because this is 95%, we're certain that this is 5% off the right, 5% off the bottom. Once I've done that, I can do a Save and Close, but in this instance, all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit stop. Now we can take all of our logos and our copyrights and all of that and place them into images in precise positions. Thanks for doing that. I'm glad we just happened upon you hanging out at 7-Eleven just yeah, in case just... someone was looking for a tutorial. So I love huh? when that sort of stuff happens. So at this point, I think it would be a good idea to go over to what would normally be the newsroom, but who knows where the news is coming to you this week. So let's go to Stephanie Cross with the news. Photoshop Storm Team Action News with news anchor Stephanie Cross. Hey guys, it's Stephanie again with the news for you today. First off, Adobe has announced Max 2007, which is an event series for people interested in designing for the web, the desktop, or mobile devices. Adobe is also accepting entries for the 2007 Max Awards. Go to adobe.com for details. And next, Image Trends has introduced two new plugins, Pearly White and Shine Off. At first, the Photoshop plugins will be available for Windows based machines with the Mac versions available soon. Check it out at this website right here. And last but not least, Avenza Systems has announced Geographic Imager 1.5 for Photoshop CS3. Geographic Imager adds the ability to work with aerial and satellite imagery in Photoshop. Check it out. I'm Stephanie Cross, and I'll see you back next week. Rock on! Yeah! I'm afraid we got to go pick up Scott now, so... Uh, and we're here. You're out. Unless right. you're going to sit in the trunk, so... Thanks. All right, I'm off. Hey, so while you're gone, we did the news. Great. RC did a little tutorial. Very cool. I missed the news. No problem. Okay. Well, um, hey, uh, Bert Monroy's got a new thing, but Corey's got all the details. Hey, Corey, can you stop for a second and tell him about Bert's new artwork? Yes, I can. Well, if you go to Bert Monroy's site, bertmonroy.com, he's posted his newest painting that he unveiled in Boston, and it's a very cool painting. It's like a tabletop with all the tablecloth and all these cool settings and everything like that. Very cool stuff. And don't forget to check out photoshopseminars.com because Bert's got an ongoing tour, the Taking the Creativity Tour, all through Canada. So check out those dates. And guys, what do you think? Did someone mention Canada? Someone did. Holy yes. cow! The Creativity Tour goes to Canada. Amazing. Out west and the east side too. So all over that cool. big, big country. 
where Dave Cross is from. I know you probably didn't know that, but <laughs> those of you who just watched it for the first time, which is all of you, I'm sure. All right. Now, has Corey done his tutorial? He hasn't. See, a lot of things happen when you stop for a snack. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we're going to find a little place for Corey to pull over here, and we're going to have a uh, Corey tutorial. Then when we come back from that, uh, we have something else. It'll be contest else. time, probably. It'll be contest time and stuff like that. So let's jump over to Corey here. Hey, uh, when you find a place you can pull over there, just uh, kind of, I think you can pull over up Yeah, there. I like it right here. How about All that? All right. Sure. So uh, I'm going to support me my laptop there. Yeah, throw my laptop. There you go. So what I have here is actually something that Mr. Kelby gave me. A an attendee at a seminar, I believe it was an attendee, yes? Yeah, yeah. Brought him a a sample of a border effect that they were desperately trying to figure out how to do and he said, Can you do a tutorial on this? So naturally Scott came to me. Mm-hmm. So I said, I know somebody that can. <laughs> <laughs> so I spent about twenty minutes and got something pretty good here. So this is what I'm gonna show you. It's a really cool border effect, and you can use it because it's, in fact, creating a custom brush that you can use to create the border with. So let's have a look here. Now, to begin creating our border brush, let's begin with a new file. Let's go under File, New. I'm going to go with a 6 by 6 inch, 100 dpi image. Here we get a square document. First thing I'm going to do is bring up my layers panel here. Let's drag this over. And we're going to create a new layer and fill it with a 50% gray. Let's do shift delete and have a 50% gray. Let's go under filter to render clouds. Now, before we run clouds, make sure your default colors are set to their default black and white. Go to render clouds and then we're gonna create a new layer and fill it with 50% gray as well. That's shift delete, let me shift backspace on APC. And on this layer, we're going to run another filter. This time we're going to go to Filter, Render, and this time go to Fibers. And I'm going to leave these settings to where they are, 16 and 4. Hit OK. We're going to go drag and duplicate this layer. We're going to go under, under the Edit menu, go to Transform. Rotate 90 degrees clockwise. And then change the blending mode of this layer to Soft Light. Select the layer beneath it, change it to Soft Light as well. So there you see we're getting a kind of interesting texture. So let's go over here to the toolbar, drag, grab our elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to hold down the shift key and just draw a circle over this area here. Now, something to remember when you're creating brushes is that the darker the area, the more opaque the brush is going to be. So here I have what looks like you know some dark texture here surrounded by some lighter areas. Well, I want to make it a little bit more softer than that. So I'm going to activate quick mask by pressing Q. Go to the filter menu, go to blur, Gaussian blur, and give it a good size blur, about 20 pixels is good. Hit OK, press Q to get back out of quick mask mode, back to the selection, and then go under the edit menu and go to define brush preset. And hit OK. I'm going to minimize this, let's bring up the image we're going to apply this to, which is this image right here. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to activate my brush tool. Let's go and find the brush we just created, which is right here at the very bottom. Bring up our brush options, and let's change a few things here. Let's uh, activate shape dynamics first. Make sure that the size jitter is up to 100%, and that the angle jitter is at 1%. So it's given a slight bit of angle. And we're going to leave the control here to off. I'm going to activate scattering, and check on both axis and make sure the scattering is around 50% so it's very slight scattering just not too much. Once that is done let's make sure we're painting with a white brush and on that empty new layer let's uh, size that brush down a little bit. I'm going to use that left bracket key and just start painting around the edge of the document and you can see it's kind of giving me that interesting texture there like that. Now I can en enhance this a little bit further by going into that layer and double clicking on it, bring out the layer styles and activate an a bevel and emboss. Let's change a couple of things here. I'm going to change the depth to 200 and I'm going to change the direction to down. And the size very small. Let's go with about 2. And then hit OK. So there you can see it's given me a really interesting kind of texture to it, a little bit of depth to it, almost like they're really aged folds or creases in the paper. Now of course I can drop the opacity down to that just to give it a little bit more 
interest there. That's pretty much it. That's taking a texture and creating very interesting brushes of it. Okay, so there you have it. So it's creating custom brushes to create some really cool border effects. So guys, back to you. Nice. Very nicely done there, my friend. You made some attendee in New York very happy. Excellent, excellent. All right, hey, uh, in just a second we're gonna take a break, but before we do, just wanna mention, you know, coming up this September is Photoshop World. Right, Las Vegas. Guess who'll be there? A uh, bunch of guys and gals. And Dave Cross. <laughs> uh, hey, a lot of the pre-conferences are already starting to sell out, even though we're still quite a ways out there. Uh, the Nikon uh, Photo Safari is just about sold out. Uh, if you want to go to the Canon live shoot, where they actually teach you live shooting in front of a, you know, I mean, with studio lighting, right there in the class, get on for that. Another real popular class this time, Deke McClellan has got a, a class on channels and masking, and it's one of the ones that's filling up the fastest as well. So go to photoshopworld.com, check it out. Also new at Photoshop World, of course, we have the portfolio reviews, right. and uh, no charge. I mean, if you're an attendee, you get to sign up, get your portfolio reviewed by some of the, you know, the best photographers and best designers in America today. We've also got the whole Lightroom stuff. We've got a whole Lightroom track. We have a whole Creative Suite track. We have a bunch of stuff for the extended. Uh, all the, yeah, all the cool stuff version. on extended. If you're into video, we got all the video guides are into that. It's just it's gonna be a wild time. Go to PhotoshopWorld.com and check out all the latest details. Well, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, it's contest time, and then of course we'll have one for the road and uh, lots of prizes and giveaways. And people are beeping us. I, I don't know why. They recognize. Hi. 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 <laughs> Stick around. We'll be right back with a lot more right here with the Photoshop guys. Don't go away. Well, here I am at the beautiful Santa Fe workshops in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I'm doing a week-long workshop, and I wanted to give you guys at home kind of a look, because if you've been reading my blog, you've been kind of following along every day as I kind of give uh, my day-to-day -day reports. And uh, well, here's the facility right behind me. It's located in this beautiful, idyllic situation. We're up on a beautiful hill that overlooks Santa Fe, and it's, I don't know, a, a better, more beautiful place to learn uh, Photoshop, digital photography, and Lightroom. So come on with me as I take you on a quick little tour so you can kind of see what's going on here at the Santa Fe workshops. our report from here in Santa Fe. Remember to learn more about the Santa Fe workshops, go to santafeworkshops.com. All right, back to you guys in the studio. All right, well everybody, it is contest time, but before we get to that, you may have noticed that we're <clears throat> we're back in the 7-Eleven parking lot, and there's two good reasons for that. Reason number one is that we needed very good access to emergency snacks, just in case that should happen. Dave said he may need yes. another five to six uh, Diet, Diet Cokes. Sodas. Sodas. So uh, we might have to do that. Uh, number two is it started raining, and it was raining so loud that well we couldn't even hear anything. So we thought well, we would come back to the 7-Eleven because it has a little roof over it, so when you pump your gas, you don't get rain wet by the rain that never happens in Florida. Right. All righty, and that's why everything's so brown here and dry like a desert. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. Yes. <laughs> Snack? No, I'm good, thank you. You're good? Okay. <laughs> Anyway, so it's contest time. Whoa, oh, oh. oh, whoa, slow down there, you <laughs> guy. Sorry, foot, foot <laughs> slipped there. Foot slipped and hit the gas, okay. All right, Mr. Cross, give us the uh, contest time. Okay, well last week we had a contest and we showed you a graphic that looked like this and said, how do you make uh, your document look like this? And a lot of people sort of took some guesses and they weren't quite correct because they were saying things like hide the background but the real trick was going to the preferences and changing the transparency setting to get that dark checkerboard so out of all the correct answers we picked a lucky person this person right here yay this person yay this person yay. Uh, so now we have another contest for which we have prizes. We I do believe. have some fabulous in prizes. The, in the prize holder. Right, in the, the prize, the, the prize bin here in the back of Corey's seat. Uh, first, we have Corey actually did a brand new DVD, and it's a DVD and an online course, but you're going to win the actual DVD. It's uh, Photoshop CS3 channels, and uh, I actually saw some feedback today from someone who just started taking the uh, the course, which is the same as the DVD, and they were absolutely raving about it. We sent it to everybody in our company because we've never had a nice comment about Corey. <laughs> so, no, I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> totally kidding. This is the second one. So anyway, but you get this great DVD. It honestly, it rocks. You get uh, 
No, I'm sorry, that's that, not it. That. How this? How about this? How about that? A subscription to Layers Magazine, the how-to magazine for all things Adobe. You'll that's get right. A subscription to right there. That lovely magazine. You'll also get a one-year membership to the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, who bring you Photoshop User Magazine as part of your membership. People write in this magazine like Corey Barker, Dave Cross. Matt Klaskowski. No, uh, no myself. No, no ski. <laughs> RC, no ski. Well, he'll be back soon. And you'll get a one year subscription to that as well. So right. when you get all of that, you can answer Dave's mystery question, which yes. is Yes. The question is take a look at this menu and tell me what what one operation would you do to make a menu look like this? So go to our website, you know how to do it by now. Enter the contest, enter once, and good luck. I hope you win this cool, cool stuff. Well, you know, we like to end each show by giving you three things to do between this week and next week, but of course, we don't really end the show that way because then we have one for the road where we leave you with a Photoshop tip. Now, last week's Photoshop tip was given by Dave Cross in the pool, and I watched that episode, and I gotta tell you, Dave, it was kinda weak. Well, you know what? It was just one of those relaxing days by the pool. It just seemed like an appropriate yeah, thing to do at that point. Yeah, it's more of a zen tip than a... It's, a, it's supposed <laughs> to be technically a Photoshop tip or something. Oh, I see. Tip or something. Oh, but that's okay. That's okay. But there was something very relaxing in those pineapples. I don't know. There was. Yeah. It was just yeah. the natural juice of the pineapples. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The natural emollients. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and start with Corey. Corey, what was your, uh, your... One of the three things to do this week? I had... There is a new podcast. Fairly new podcast by two gentlemen named Ed Begg and Jefferson Graham. It is called Talking Tech. And it's all about new technologies and new gadgets. All kinds of cool stuff like that. Check it out uh, at this link right here. Pretty cool stuff. Excellent. All right. Mine's kind of two in one. Uh, last week I talked... Taught... I taught a week-long hands-on class at the Santa Fe Workshop, and for those of you who are watching my Photoshop Insider or reading my Photoshop Insider blog saw me posting every day from that. Well, first off is the Santa Fe Workshops are going down to San Miguel, Mexico, and they've got to I put together an incredible trip, and so if you're interested in that kind of thing and going on location, shooting with some great shooters, you know, uh, for uh, it's more than a week, I believe. I think it's like eight days. So I'm not sure how many days it is, but it's, it's a special trip down there to San Miguel, and it looks just like an unbelievable experience. Go to santafeworkshops.com, but here's my big tip. The big tip is, when I was there last week, I got exposed to a photographer that I had not or I had not been exposed to before, and her name is Karen Kuhn, and I was just blown away. She was an incredible photographer. She taught a week-long class called Mastering the Portrait, but what even blew me away, not, not as much as her photography, but blew me away on a whole other level was what their class did. At the end of the week, they show you a student, like, here's what the students did, and I was, my jaw and all my students were just like... I mean, it was incredible. She's an unbelievable teacher and an incredible photographer. Go to KarenKuhn.com. You can use this link, right? Come on, Dave, do it with me. Here. All right. And to wrap things up for your three things, even though mine was kind of two, here's the third. <laughs> well, I have a, a website for you to go to if you're either a wedding photographer or you're soon to be married or you're just like looking at cool photos. I came across this one of those things where you're one blog and at least you're another blog and another blog, and it's called Trash. The dress. I have to check and see. I can remember. But it's right there anyway. <laughs> and this is photographers who convince brides to say, you know what? We've done all your shoot. Let's do something really cool in your wedding dress, like get in a lake or just really cool stuff. And particularly look for the video on the people that, that took shots in an underwater cave with water. It was very cool. So check it out. All righty. Well, it's time to wrap things up with our one for the road. But before we do, hey. That looks like Felix. That's na like Naps. That's Naps' director of, uh, well, cre our creative director for the whole company. So let's uh, swing in there and see if we can say hi to Felix real quick. Hey, look who it is. Felix! Felix. What's up, man? What's happening? How are you guys doing? All right. Hey, we're doing Run for the Road. You got a tip for us? Anything on a link? Cool little Photoshop tip? Some little... Do I have a tip? Let me see. Yeah, I got, I got a tip for you. All right. Um, you know, if you're uh, if your toolbar is in a single column and you want to get it back to a double column, like in CS2, just click on the double arrows at the top of the toolbar and it'll it'll go to two columns. Sweet. Awesome. But there's more. Ooh. There's more. There's Ooh. More. There's more. All right. Did you know that you could take any panel or any palette and just take it and drag it right over to the toolbar and actually dock it to the toolbar? Sweet! Awesome. All right. Cool. Hey, well, Felix, thanks for dropping in and giving us our one for the road. 
<laughs> and uh, we got to hit the road. That was uh, Felix okay. Nelson, Nap's creative director. And what the weird thing was, what a coincidence that he would just be walking yes, just down the range. street. Just crazy. Where were you going, Felix? I was just walking down the street, down a random road, doing basically nothing. Wow. wow what? Amazing. Who would have thought that Felix Nelson, this creative genius, just walking down the street? How fortuitous for us. <laughs> Amazing. Fortuitous. Thanks, well, Felix. Good. Thanks, oh, Felix. We'll, we'll catch you later. Take, keep, it, take keep, you guys. I'm going to keep walking down keep, my random road. Keep on walking. <laughs> All right, well, that wraps up yet another episode. So, on behalf of myself, Scott Kelby, and a foreign man from a foreign land, and a guy who's rocking a house key somewhere else key, <laughs> and our driver today and concierge, Mr. Corey Barker. Bye, everyone. See you. Man, and we're driving, there he goes. We're driving really slow, aren't we? I thought I'd when get... Felix walks past your car. <laughs> I, thought I'd, I thought I'd give him a head start. You know? That was good. That was good. When Felix walks. All right. So uh, I think we're going to go to the McDonald's drive-thru, but uh, we'll catch you guys later. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next week. Not in our studio, but even closer than we were from Dave's pool to the car. Who knows where next week. See you guys later. Take Bye. care. Gotcha. Coca-Cola? My man. That's a Coca-Cola product right there. <laughs> and uh, Dave, got you a uh, Diet Coke. Here, here you go. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, that's mine. Diet Coke is mine here.